Well guys, got to unload the truck from the mowing here. We got the 63 L with the scoop on it. And we got the 432. On this side, we got the flywheels for the hit and miss engine, which I was really worried about driving home with that because they weigh a ton and I figured they'd launch out of the trailer, but they never moved an inch. Over here in the bucket, I put the Stover hit and miss engine right in the bucket of that thing. So that's cool. But uh, that never really moved either. And uh, that'll be my next big project is trying to source all the parts for this motor. It's stuck too. It's, uh, it's missing a rocker arm. Whatever this piece on the bottom is, which I think is kind of like the carburetor type piece, that's broken off. Um, it's missing these caps up here for the bearings and the connecting rod and the and the crankshaft. All the stuff on the side here is all just frozen solid. So that'll be a project for someday. Up here we got the Onion NB 12 force engine that we took off that 430 yesterday. And uh, that's just for parts. I'm going to use the head on on this 430 back there because what I did is the bolts snapped off that go into these little holes there on that one. So I'll put this head over there. Uh, in the back of the truck we got the Autolite starter machine. Down here we got a couple things I was trying to sell that no one bought. Uh, a Kohler block from a Cub Cadet that's beautiful, standard bore. An old K241 block from who knows what. It's a really old one. A Wisconsin BKN block that no one cared about. And this cool old motor called a Pincor from a real mower that I wanted to sell and no one cared about that. An oil pan from a Cub Cadet with a brand new gasket. And a bearing plate for a Kohler that uses an under flywheel magneto. So it's kind of rare that someone would ever need one of those. Um, over here we got a tin that Keith gave me. Thanks Keith. Down here we got some parts. We got a flywheel screen for a Kohler. Some gas tank straps for a Kohler. A hydraulic control valve which will go into the 812 that I bought. It was missing that. Oh, we got a gas can. We've got a bag full of planetary gears that came out of that 430 that we stripped out. Uh, we got the other L over there, which is a 61 with the snow plow. Down here I bought this muffler for an Onan. This will work on the Quickway machine. It's got that kind of uh, down tube or whatever you call it. There's a kink in this piece right here. And uh, I don't know that that matters or not, but I could always cut this tube off and weld on a new tube, theoretically. And uh, in this box, I had some pistons I was trying to sell for $5 a piece. They're all standard pistons, so no one needs a standard piston. I have this crankshaft here out of either a 12 or 14 horse Cub Cadet for a Kohler. It's a pretty nice crankshaft, needs to be turned. And next to it, I have a box of NOS Gravely Sickle Bar Knife Blades. Uh, probably no one even saw them because I really wasn't sitting at my table. Luckily, Ron's wife sold some stuff for me, so thank you for that. But uh, I'm probably going to put that on eBay. They're literally brand new and uh, in the original box, and I think there's 30 of them. So if anyone wants those, let me know, and I can sell them to you for a real good price. And uh, I think that's about all the loot that we picked up. And uh, we had a lot of fun for three days at that show. But uh, now we got to take all this stuff out of the truck, and I don't really have any energy today. I think I have to take out the uh, Deutz Alice bucket loader to help move some of these engines here, because my back isn't really up to it today. All right, see you. Well, guys, I decided to do a little work on this 63 uh, L8 before I put it away. As you notice, there's no starter chain or anything. And when I restored this tractor a couple years ago, I never got around to hooking up the electrical parts. And in an effort to clean my garage, I realized that, you know what? I have all those battery cables sitting in the garage, so why don't I hook them up? So I'm hooking up the battery cables here. 
You'll notice down here the magneto was never hooked up to the kill switch. And that's because the old kill switch up here doesn't work. So it's like just dead. So I'm actually going to take off this handlebar grip, pull out that switch, and put a new switch in there before I put this away in the shed. And I just got to hook up that starter cable and I got a chain to drop on there. Then maybe we can jump start this thing instead of uh, pulling my shoulder out. But yesterday it started on one pull, which was awesome, but still, I don't feel like pulling it. Well, this was the old uh, kill switch, which obviously is a little bit hurt. And this is a new one, so the old one, this whole ring around the top here is totally gone. So we'll plug this one in and uh, maybe I'll just sand this rust out of here a little tiny bit so it has a nice contact to ground. Uh, I might just take my moto tool with the grinding wheel and just go around it real quick. But we'll just clean that up a hair first and then we'll drop in that new switch. We'll just give it a little freshness. Yeah, the switch works. That's awesome. Well, the only other thing I got to fix on this track there, I just noticed this while I'm driving it back here, is that there's a lot of play in the crankshaft. If I watch this pulley, watch, look. You see that play in the crankshaft? I'm going to have to take this apart someday and shim out that oil pump a little bit, put a couple shims in there, and uh, see if we can drop that play because... I mean, that's not good. There's quite a bit, which isn't good. So I don't really like to run it that much because of that, but it runs really good, but I do want to fix that. And I've got some of those shims in my garage. Just a matter of popping the starter clutch off and uh, getting back there to that oil pump, putting a couple shims in there. You got to take this pull start pulley off too, which sometimes sucks, but or electric start pulley, but a eh, puller will come right off. But anyways, uh, I think that this thing has finally got a starting system and a shutoff system. And now I won't have to break my freaking shoulders trying to pull that damn thing to start it. But uh, that's about it. Well, in order to get this uh, Autolite starter machine with the sickle bar in here, I had to jack up the other tractor and put it under the wheel. I know this is retarded, but it's the only way I could get this thing in. But it fit. A lot of work though, all this junk. But I had fun at the moment.